Hey everybody, welcome back to the Revelation Bible Study. My name is David Kenny, and I am the pastor of Walden Community Church here in Montgomery, Texas, and we are going through the entire book of Revelation. And we are currently in Revelation chapter 6. We read up through verse 11 last time. Uh, we're seeing John. He's in the throne room. He's seen God. He's seen Jesus. Jesus takes the, the scroll, right? He has the deed to the earth, and now he's popping seals off the scroll. And every single time uh, a seal is popped, a different major event takes place in Earth's history. And all of these are signs that are heading us towards the end of days, the end of time, the end of the world. And so uh, I know sometimes we read this as sim sim symbolic and we try to read into these passages, but I think what we read today, uh, these are actual events. These are things that will take place. And so I know we like to think that every time it seems like there's a little bit of bad in the world, we, we cry out and say, oh, we must be living in the end of days, but um, it's a lot different than what the Bible actually talks about as being the end of days. And we're gonna see that right now in Revelation 6 verse 12. It says, when Jesus opened the sixth seal, I looked, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth, the full moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth as the fig tree sheds its winter fruit when shaken by a gale. The sky vanished like a scroll that is being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. So what are all these signs that John sees? He sees an earthquake, he sees the sun turn black, he sees the moon turn red, and maybe if you've sat in a Revelation Bible study before or you know, looked in your Bible notes and you said, well, what's going on? And somebody might say, well, these are just symbols of things that are to come. Maybe, but it does seem literal, right? It does seem literal. In fact, when he talks about the uh, the heavens, the stars falling to the ground, he says it's like a fig tree. So he already uses a symbol there. So he's not using a symbol to describe a symbol, right? These are actual things that are going to take place. If it sounds literal, it probably is literal. I think these are literal things. The stars fall to the earth. What would that be? What would the stars falling to the earth be? The meteors, right? Asteroids, uh, particles from space, just pummeling the earth, actual space objects coming into our atmosphere and hitting the planet. Can you picture this? I mean, this is straight out of a big budget Hollywood movie. John says that the amount of space objects, and asteroids and meteors that hit the earth, it'll be like someone shook a tree and all the ripened fruit just falls out and just hits the ground, boom, 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 boom. right? And then he says, the sky recedes like a scroll. Now that's uh, a verse from a very popular hymn, right? And we sing that song like it's, like it's something beautiful, but this is horrifying, horrifying to see the sky peel back, to roll up on itself, to see the sky vanish. As, this would be total chaos. This would be the most frightening thing you'd ever seen, to see the sun disappear the moon turn red, to have the earth pummeled by rocks, to see the sky recede and disappear. And then he says mountains crumbling, islands disappearing into the water. The whole earth, its, its structure, the way the earth looks, it completely changes. And this all happens in front of John while he's watching. It sounds so bizarre, right? To, to think that you would sit there and watch this, that you would witness this, you'd think, wow, this is really strange. This is really bizarre, but I, I don't know. Is it, it chaos and destruction are not always as bizarre as we think. I mean, entropy is part of existence. Everything dies. Everything goes away. So there's no reason to not believe that one day it'll happen to the earth. The earth one day will die. And the Bible says it's true, right? The Bible says it's true. And it's amazing that the earth even uh, has survived as long as it has. 
I mean, we don't get hit by asteroids and meteors on a daily basis, but we could. Other planets in our solar system get hit by asteroids all the time. We don't. I mean, we get hit by tiny little microscopic rocks that we can't see, but big, huge asteroids, we, we've been spared. We live a great, great existence down here. And in fact, when you think about all the things scientifically that have to take place to make our world spin and keep going and sustain life, it's, it's crazy. You know, even, even in our own Earth, you know, even in our own Earth, down at the center of it, our Earth's core is 7,000 degrees. So we stand above an Earth's core every day that we're at the center of it, 7,000 degrees. And then on top of that, on the outside, where we're standing, we're standing on the edge of a sphere that's spinning at 1,000 miles an hour. We are all spinning at 1,000 miles per hour, standing on top of a planet that's 7,000 degrees, 70% covered by water, which is good. We need all that water to cool down that, that Earth's core. And then we all orbit all of that big, moving, hot, spinning mass chaos is spinning around a sun, right? And we're spinning around the sun at 67,000 miles an hour. 67,000 miles per hour. And in all that time, we don't hit anything, <laughs> right? We don't hit anything and nobody flies off. That's amazing. That's amazing. Not only that, but as we're spinning ourselves and then spinning around the sun, the sun is shedding. Do you know that? You know our sun sheds? Have you ever seen like close-up movie pictures of the sun? You see those fiery things that, that, that move off the top of it? That's all um, like nuclear magnetic substance. Tons of it, tons of it leaves the sun. And that doesn't hit us either. <laughs> That stuff doesn't hit us either. And so when the Bible says, you know, well, at the end of days, uh, we're going to get hit by a lot of things from space, that should make sense. We should be like, yeah, it's about time. <laughs> it's about time something hit us because nothing has hit us in all this time. So it's not bizarre uh, thinking about the end of days. It seems like, oh, yeah, sure. I mean, eventually something's got to hit us, right? Uh, that, creating something, I think, is so much more difficult than destroying something, Right? Destroying, anybody can destroy something. So I think witnessing the end of the world, yeah, it's inevitable. It's natural. But listen to this. The next verse, verse 15 says, Then the kings of the earth and the great ones and the generals and the rich and the powerful and everyone, slave and free, hid themselves in caves and among rocks in the mountains, calling to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who is seated on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come and who can stand? So what does John witness when the earth is falling apart, when the world is being destroyed at the end of days? What does he witness? The most powerful people, the most rich people, people with status, fame, glory, leaders, important people, everyone, right? The Bible says slaves and free. Doing what? Running for their lives. They're all running for their lives. No one's safe, right? Your wealth doesn't save you in a time like this. Your, your leadership position doesn't save you in a time like this. In a time like this, it's a great equalizer, right? We're all on the same ground here. We're all on the same footing. When the sun turns black and the moon turns red, mountains fall into the sea and islands are swallowed up and meteors start pummeling the earth, it's not gonna matter what's on your name tag or how big your bank account is or what kind of car you drive, right? Everyone runs and hides. When Jesus comes, he's gonna destroy the world. That's what it says. At the end of days, there won't be status, there won't be wealth, there will only be the wrath of God. That's the end of the world. Those are the signs of living in the end of days. Visually seeing God unleash fury, which is so strange. You know, the, the first time Jesus came to earth, he came to save it. The second time he comes to earth, he comes to destroy it. 
Make no mistake. This is what Revelation says. I'd say it was funny, but it's not funny. It's not funny that right now, in 2020, we are all arguing with each other. We are all choosing sides. We are drawing lines in the sand and saying, you stand on that side and I stand on this side. You believe that and I believe this. And we're arguing and fighting and quarreling and posting things on Facebook as if any of it mattered. None of it matters. None of it matters. There is no side but God's side. Guess what? All of those arguments that are making us so heated and that we care so much about, all of this conversation, all of this quarreling and bickering, it's meaningless. Right or wrong, it's meaningless. Whether you think you're right or wrong, it's meaningless. Because the day when the mountains fall into the ocean and the sun turns black and the moon turns red and the rich and the leaders and the powerful will run screaming into the caves begging for it all to stop. And the only thing that will matter is the only thing that does matter. And that's Jesus. Listen. The only action that you can take right now that will truly change the world is the action you take to follow Christ. And the only action that you take right now that will really matter is the action you take in the life of your neighbor. You need to spend more time loving your neighbor and less time arguing with them because the only thing that matters is Jesus. And who will it be that sits around the table? Who will it be sitting around the banquet table in heaven with Christ? I'll give you a sneak peek. I'll give you a sneak peek because it's not who you think. John records in Revelation 7, 9, after this I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation from all tribes, all peoples, all languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. Who is in heaven? Is it one people group? Nope. The Bible says it's people from every continent, people from every country. Is it people who only speak one language? No. Multiple languages. Because being a Christian is not defined by the color of your skin and it's not defined by the color of your tie. It's solely the color of the blood on the cross. And when the sky rolls back like a scroll, that's the only color that matters. The only thing that's important only thing that's mat that matters, the only conversation worth having, the only truth worth repeating, and the only argument that I will ever be passionate about is Jesus. Because that's all that matters. I love you guys. See you next time. Bye.